Luke, you ran over one of our viewers. What's that all about? Dude, I was right behind him, <laughs> and then he tipped over. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Time to put new grips on the TC50. We're gonna be using the Risk Racing Fusion 2.0 grip set. Usually changing grips on a dirt bike is a pain. It's right up there on the Mount Rushmore of annoying things you have to do to a dirt bike, right next to changing tires. I hate changing tires. Dad, can I get new tires for my bike? <laughs> no, never. Just like everything else Riss does, these grips are innovative, they're creative, they grip very well, they will not slip, they do not require glue, they do not require wires to hold them in place. And I didn't think that was a big deal, but it actually really helps because when you're grabbing onto the grip, it doesn't even feel like you're grabbing onto the grip, there's no give between the grip and the bar. So it feels like you're grabbing the handlebar and you're just one step closer to being connected and one with the bike. But the cool thing about these grips is putting them on. You take the fusion strip, take the bottom layer of backing off, rub it onto the grip till it gets stuck, put it just to the edge where it overlaps on the edge of the bar, and then you can start taking off the back layer of the fusion strip. At this point, you're gonna spray a few squirts of the catalyst directly onto the fusion strip. Use your fingers to spread it around evenly. Before I put the grip on, I like to give it about 13 to 15 seconds to really let the catalyst just kind of soak in absorb, do its magic. During that time, I would encourage you just to try to do something productive, write that novel that you've been thinking about, try a new cake recipe, go peacefully riot at your favorite electronic dealer, or if you're like me, I like to just use that time to bond with my children. Be sure to set a timer though. Hey Mason. Hi. How are you buddy? I'm good. Are you sure? Are you doing all right? Mason, you can talk to me. I kind of get the feeling like something might be wrong. Well, my teacher has been bullying me at school. Every morning she makes me get up in the class and... Alright, I gotta go. Good talk, Mason. The... We'll talk again next time I change the grips! The grips should slide right on. If they don't, you could always add a little bit more catalyst directly into the grip itself. You'll notice that the front of the grip says front. It has an arrow pointing towards the front of the bike. That ensures that not only your Risk Racing logo is gonna be in the optimal position, that also helps because the grip is actually designed with a little slot for your thumb to go. So you're not gonna get that rubbing on the inside of your thumb, that blister right there. Good thinking, Risk. Well, there you go, guys. That simple. I mean, if, if I can put the grips on that quick, you know it must be easy. Thank you very much to Risk Racing for sponsoring this video. You guys, if you wanna help us out, if you wanna support us, then be sure to support the brands that support us. What up guys, welcome to the video. We got a brand new video starting right now. It's a new one, brand new one. We've never done this one before. Well, duh. Today's gonna to be a busy day, but it's gonna be a good day. We're gonna go ride back up at Pacific Raceway. It's a practice this time. We're not gonna race, uh, it's just a practice. And we gotta do a little bit of bike prep before uh, we can head up there. I'm running to the bike shop right now. I gotta get spark plugs. I gotta get air filter cleaner. There's something else too. What else was there? Oh, hopefully Lillian's pipe came in. We got a new pipe for the YZ85. The exhaust already came in. That's on the bike. We're just waiting on the expansion chamber. We gotta get gas. We gotta get a trailer. And then we're gonna have to drive a few hours to get up to Kent, Washington. It's nine o'clock right now. We're just getting the day started and we're not gonna get home until like probably 12 or 1. So it's gonna be a full day for us just to get a few hours on the track. And there's a specific reason why we're gonna spend an entire day and probably $200 with gas track fees and renting a trailer for us to do this. So I'll get into that in just a second. But first, hey, we got kind of like a new sponsor, Nilo Concepts. 
is uh, hooking us up with an affiliate link. So if you guys wanna help us out and you're in the market for some killer parts, please consider using our link uh, if you buy something from their website. It doesn't cost you anything else. It just gives us a little bit of a commission. Just uh, puts a little bit of wind in our sails and gives us a little bit of extra income so that way we can do more of these videos more often. Check it out. Nice. It's blinging. She's gonna love that. We had to go with a bigger trailer this time because Larry number four is coming, which is good because now Lillian has someone to battle with. Okay, turn off the TikToks, guys. Lillian, how do you like your new pipe? Shiny. Shiny? Yeah, I want you to know that the shiny finish cost $5 more. Really? It did, but I wasn't gonna do it, but then I thought about you and I decided to go ahead and do it for you. So you're welcome. Really spent $5 for shiny. It's five extra for the shiny, yeah, but you're worth it. We are on the road, here we go guys, on our way to Pacific Raceway. We've been there to race, we have never been there for a practice. Here's the thing, we've done the first three races, or at least Luke has. In the first race, Luke got second, in the second race he got first, and then in the third race he got fourth. So he's currently second in the point standing, so congrats Luke. But I think he's got a little bit more speed in him, so I think we're gonna go and practice because he's never hit the main double, like the one in front of the grandstands and stuff. He hasn't hit that double yet, which is understandable because they only give you two laps of practice and the practice is super crowded. There's always traffic and people in front of them. And then in the race, if he's in a good position, like why, why risk it? Why hit a double for the first time in a race if you're already doing well? So it makes sense. But this time we wanna go so we can practice. He's been jumping really good lately. This should be nothing for him, but this is a lot of work just to go. So Luke, you better hit it. Enough. You got Good. this. I believe in you. Dirt bike. Hey guys, this is rad. Look at that guy's shorts. <laughs> it's cool because the breeze kind of like pushes it up a little bit so we can see a little bit more leg than he probably knows right now. Oh yeah. Did he shave his legs? When you have legs that nice, you just kind of have to show them off. Here we go. We have to enter Washington. I like your legs. Thank you, Luke. That was very polite. What's up, Larry? New bike, new number, new Larry. What is it in there? Yeah, tie downs. Fresh new 2020. Are you jealous, Luke? Yeah. Me too. Larry, congrats on the new bike, man. Thank you. Why'd you change your number? Uh, my dad changed it. Oh, okay. So instead what? of Larry number four, you're Larry number four four. Or as the ladies call him, Larry number foo foo. So when you get a 125, you'll be Larry number 444. Yeah, probably. Okay, cool. And when I get a 450, I'll be Larry 444. Hey Hunter. Uh, Mason forgot his gloves. Do you happen to have an extra pair of gloves yeah, by chance? Here. Sweet. This is the second time the hunter saved the day for us. You're rad. Right. Thanks so much, man. Moment of truth. This is the first practice session. Luke is following Hunter. The fast kid just moved up to 65 and he's sticking on him okay, so hopefully he learned something. Oh, oh, he just ran over him. 
Darn it! Luke just ran over Hunter. Luke, I wanted you to learn from him, not run over the kid. I think he's got it. Open track in front of him, I think he'll go for it. riding this track ever. She's doing all right. some open track. Good job. Not even joking, you were doing awesome. 
Mason, good job, buddy. How do you like that? Okay, good talk. Luke, you ran over one of our viewers. What's that all about? Dude, I was right behind him, <laughs> and then he tipped over. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Hunter, dude, I'm sorry Luke ran over you. He's grounded. He's not racing again he for three my, months. <laughs> I'm glad you're okay. From my view, it looked like he like ran over your stomach. He ran over right here. Cool. I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, you're all right. Next time, I'll I'll have have uh, Luke follow you off the double because you're doing it really good. Sounds pretty good to me. What do you think, Mason? What? How does Lillian's bike sound? Good? Not as good as yours, but still pretty good. <laughs> I can tell you the problem. The longer you wait to hit a jump, the longer it takes you, the more you think about it, the more big it gets in your mind, the more it psychs you out. He's been thinking about it too long. He's been riding here for like, what, four weeks and hasn't hit it yet? Here it comes. Like yesterday, we went to Mountain View. First time on the track, he's hitting big jumps, way bigger than this. We come here, this psyched him out. He's not gonna do it. He had lots of track room last time, he didn't do it. Now there's nothing but traffic. Let's check on Larry and Lillian. Larry is right over here. Uh, Lillian is a few positions back, but she's catching up, Larry. Better get on it, Larry. She's coming for you.
I'm sitting over there in the perfect position for the whole practice, waiting for him to jump it. He never does, so I'm like, okay, well, I guess I should go get shot somewhere else. And I walk all the way over here, and then he does it. From all the way over here, I can't even see him. Hey, Luke, good job hitting it when I was way over there and could barely see you. No, there were so many kids surrounding me. You had a few open shots, so you didn't go for it, though. So I was like, all right, well, I'll go somewhere else. And then I was about to hit it, and then this kid comes in front of me. All right. And then I, I flew over and hit it last lap because there were so many kids. Yeah, I saw that. Well, good job. Was it easy? Yeah. Well done. Lillian, how'd you like the new pipe? Are you kidding me? You didn't notice anything. I was trying to get around people. Well, did it help you get around people? Yeah. Okay, then you noticed something. Last practice for the night for the kids. I think I got one more, but uh, for the kids, this is the last one. Hold on guys, one second. Let me just interrupt this vlog to explain something real quick. I'm sure you're probably noticing that I don't have any GoPro footage of Luke or myself. And that's because Luke and I were sharing a GoPro and I cannot find that footage anywhere for the life of me. I've been looking, but at this point I just give up and I'm just gonna upload the video as is. Um, but you get the gist. I mean, Luke flew around the track, hit the double a couple of times. I put it around, got past a lot, you know, you know how it goes. Uh, so sorry, I don't have that GoPro footage. The only shot that I had actually was when Luke ran over Hunter. And the reason I have that is because when I got home, I uploaded that to Instagram and then I was able to pull that off of Instagram and put it into the vlog. So sorry, I don't have any GoPro footage of uh, me or Luke. Um, but as you're about to find out, that was just the tip of the iceberg and things got a lot worse. Well, Luke did the double probably about a half a dozen times, which was the main goal of what we were trying to achieve here. So all in all, it was a good day, except for the part where my bike blew up. I was over on the furthest, the back section, of course, all the way on the other side of the track, and the bike dies. It bogs out, and you know, I go to give it gas, and it just is cutting out like it was out of gas. So I pull over to the side of the track, check the gas. It's good, everything looks fine. I try to kick it over again and it kicks over but it just sounds really rough like just something's loose or uh, just didn't sound right so i go to ride it back to the truck and then it died again i gave it a few minutes to chill uh and then just you know gave it a light test to kick it over and that thing ain't going nowhere so it's definitely seized so there's that